We've now conquered our four most common ways of manipulating data inside of our Mongo database. Create, read, update, and destroy. So now that we've covered these basics, we can start to explore a lot more of what Mongoose has to offer. And then after we're done with a broad overview, we can work on our next project. I want to take a second to kind of reconsider or remember what we're working with when we touch Mongoose, or Mongoose, excuse me. When we work with Mongoose, we are working with kind of an interface to Mongo. Mongoose is all about just giving us a nicer API, something that has advanced functionality to work with Mongo. All of the operations that we've worked with so far, like specifically reading, writing, updating, and destroying data out of our Mongo database, is implemented by Mongoose, but we could have just as easily reached directly to Mongo and essentially had basically the same experience. So what I mean by that is, everything we've done so far with Mongoose is kind of just a very nice little wrapper around Mongo, but essentially it's very close to us just reaching out to Mongo directly. What we're gonna to start to talk about now is a lot more of the advanced features around Mongoose that offer us great, awesome functionality around Mongo that is not implemented in Mongo at all by default. So we're gonna start working with features that are special and implemented by Mongoose specifically to give us a way better experience when working with Mongo. The first feature that we're gonna work with that's gonna make us uh, <laughs> giddy with joy about how much nicer it is than working directly with Mongo is validation. Validation is the process of evaluating whether or not the properties of a record are safe to save to our database. I want to add a validation rule to our user model and say that a user must have a name longer than two characters in order to be considered valid. So in this case, we would consider Joe to be valid because it's three characters. A name of A, or maybe better than A would be Al, would be invalid because it's only two, and Amanda would be valid because it's longer than two characters as well. Once a record or a model is marked as being invalid inside of Mongoose, it should not be able to be saved to our database. The purpose of validation is to make sure that we don't insert junk data into our database. We don't want users to be submitting uh, or signing up with usernames that don't exist or really short names or this would even be a great way to uh, prevent profanity inside of our usernames as well. This validation that we're about to add in is solely implemented by Mongoose, as we're using it at least. As at the validation level that we're using is 100% Mongoose. Mongo does have support for validation, but we are not directly uh, working with it with the validation that we're about to use on the Mongoose side. Okay, so let's get started on this. Let's walk through an example of adding in some validation on our name property of our users. To learn more about validation on our users, we're gonna take the same approach as we have with all of our other operations. I'm gonna create a new test file, and inside of there, we'll write a test to kind of verify that validation is working the way that we would expect it to with Mongoose. So I'm gonna start off by making a new test file inside of my test directory and I'm gonna call this one validation test JS. And then inside of here, we can place a little bit of our boilerplate that we've come to love so much. So we will require a cert at the top. We will grab our user model. And then we'll place our describe block. And I'm gonna give this a description of validating records. Okay, so now inside of here, we're not gonna make a before each and declare Joe ahead of time. Remember, the whole purpose of validation is to say that we should not be able to insert a record to our database if the record isn't valid. So our, the entire purpose of our before each up to this point has been to make a record and then save it to our database just to avoid the repetitiveness of all that stuff. In this case, I want to specifically create records and then validate them without saving them to the database. So I'm not gonna use it before each here. I will add my first it, and I'm gonna say inside of here, requires a user name. So I expect that we should be able to write a test where we can create a new user, validate it somehow, and see an error message if we do not assign a username to it. Okay, so that's our goal. 
Let's start figuring out how we're going to implement this in the next section.